You know, I have great respect for what John Mayer did in Dead and Company. He spent a huge amount of time studying the songs, studying the Jerry Garcia style of guitar, learning that swinging hillbilly bop kind of beautiful style that they had. And then the first time I stood on the stage with John, at soundcheck, listening to what was coming out of his amps and how he had integrated himself into the music. I was stunned. I thought it sounded great. And I didn't really understand the energy of the Grateful Dead's fans until I was in the audience and I caught the fever. <laughs> I really liked it. Not only that, he was singing really well, playing really well, and everybody in the place was way into it. So I have a real respect for how he has honored that music exactly the way it needs to be uh, with injecting as little of himself and as much of what that music needs as possible. I thought it was great. So the idea for this guitar came from an instrument that Garcia had played in the band uh, at one point, and John had gotten his hands on one of them and really liked it. So when I heard that John wanted that tone for this tour, I called him and I said, I got an idea. Do you know, we talked about having a non-tremolo version, having all this brass on the guitar. Um, we talked about all this stuff early on in the Silver Sky Project. And I think I can have you a prototype in five days. He said, go, let's go, let's do it now. We went as fast as we could. The finish on this guitar is mock sand. It's a swamp ash body and the finish is sunk into the grain. Um, I mean, if you look at it really carefully, you can see it, but you can also feel it. And that's the way it was on the original instrument. There's a brass nut and a hold down bar. And the hold down bar helps with pressure down on the nut. There's an all brass bridge on it, like a normal PRS. But without springs, the brass block is literally being held in place by a perfectly cut cavity for it. There's also six screws in the front and two screws in the back that all hold it down to the body. And we put the preamp in, the Olympic Blaster, as well. The thing I loved about it is that there was all this brass on the guitar that was not suspended by tremolo springs, and it gave this beautiful mid-range, and then the preamp cleared it up. The preamp made it so that that mid-range was clearer and more transparent portable musically through the, through the cables because it was a low impedance output. And then we turned the gain up. We made it louder, which was good fun. It worked really well. And I plugged it in and went, wow, do I like this guitar. So let me show you the moment that I plugged the prototype in because this is, this is the same guitar. And I'll show you what I heard. So with the switch down, the preamp is off. And I thought that sounded good, but when we put the preamp on... For me, it was getting all the sounds, and it had this beautiful mid-range and high-end and bass. And it was getting sounds you could use on any record. <laughs> I started laughing. I went, oh, he's going to like this. Ship it. The only thing we did after I first turned it on is in the screw hole on the preamp, we turned it up some. There's a little screw hole here in the jack plate, and you put a little screwdriver in it, and you can turn it. If you turn it all the way up, it's got a lot of gain. Turn it down, it doesn't have any gain. And we put it what we thought was in exactly the right place for his pedal board. John's tech, Jeremy, had a lot to do with this, too. He was into the idea. He thought it would be a good idea for us to make an instrument that got those tones. Maybe we could make some improvements. Um, we knew what the goal was. He knew what the goal was. And there was a lot of discussion between me and Jeremy to make sure the instrument was right as well. So my memory when John got the guitar was 
this thing sounds really good, I can use it. It wasn't a complicated conversation. It was one of appreciation that we were able to go that fast, one of that it did more than he expected it to do and that he was going to use it and it was going to work. It was not chosen because his endorsing company made the instrument. It was chosen because he wanted that sound and this did a better job. That was the part I was pleased about. He liked the idea, he gave us the opportunity, and we were able to get that sound for him. So for this guitar, John says, well, let's do dead spec. Let's do what that last tour, what the guitar was. This is the guitar that he played on that tour. I mean, there's no real difference. It's not like he's got the one and we made a bunch of bad copies. These are the same guitars. By the way, this is a limited run. We're only going to make a thousand of them. And you get the same guitar John's got. This is a hell of an instrument, and I like the way it sounds. Bye, everybody. Thanks for listening. See ya.